producer, you got to have a a mean of reason to play your beats. So DJing. Okay, I do know how to DJ. To give you some context, maybe and I'm actually going to take this with, without the drums. Let's let's take the drums out. Glad you asked. I do DJ. And I've been DJing for a little over 10 years now, but just like kind of like at home and just kind of like vibing. But since 2018, I was asked to join Sango from Selection. I don't know if you guys know who Sango Beats is. Great, great fellow, great friend of mine, big bro. Um Love, love Sango, love Sango here. And I'm actually going to try and see if I can get him on the Twitch stream. But he showed me the ins and outs of playing DJ sets of my beats live on Ableton Live. And this is what made me transfer over to Ableton Live completely because I discovered you can play music live on Ableton. Now, this is just one of those functions that people don't talk about or discuss much in Ableton. And um, yeah, what I will definitely say is before I show you guys what I show you guys right now, there is a brief understanding that has to happen when it comes to DJing music. Obviously, I wouldn't want you guys to just go out there and just play your beats and just kind of like not know what you're doing. Have a musical ear. And so this is a this is the first thing I want to let you guys know when I show you what I'm about to show you. Keep in mind that this is all from a musical perspective. And uh, I think the way I play my DJ sets is not like a DJ. I play my DJ sets like I am playing with a band. And at any given moment, I can loop something and remix something on the spot. The reason why is because I set up my template to do so. And you'll see in just a few moments. But what I currently have here, what I currently have here is the same controller that Sango gave me back in 2018. This controller, right? This controller was what he gave me back in 2018. I've been using this since 2018. This controller has gotten me around the world multiple times. And ever since I learned how to DJ on Ableton, I genuinely can't do anything other than play my beats live and do mashups and remix stuff and give something live effects all in the process while using this controller. So your greatest bet is to find a controller that has some sort of pads. You can use a keyboard, but you're going to need something that you can visually see and interact with in order to do this as well. Get yourself some sliders, get yourself some knobs. What makes this thing so crazy, what makes this Aikai MPD-226 so crazy is that it's just the same as the 26 of the previous generation. It was a bigger like version of the MPD. And I remember this thing was so heavy to carry on that plane. It, not this one, but it was a 26. And so, uh, when I got this, I'll never forget, it was Knockdown Center in New York City. I played like the craziest, it was like the craziest show I've ever played. It was in front of 2,000 people. Sold out. Andre Power was there. Um, Devin Tracy was there. It was my first time playing a New York show, and I was super, super nervous, so I didn't even want to use this controller because I didn't want to mess up. So I stuck with that uh, 26, and that was like the last show I did the show in with that controller. And, I am so grateful uh, for Sango for investing in in in, in this and in, in, in the future. You know, at that time it was crazy. It was crazy, crazy. But uh, love you, Sango. If you ever see this, love you, Sango. Um, but yeah, I'm about to bounce this beat out. That way you guys can see me in real time play this. So I'm gonna do a couple things real quick. Let me make sure everything is on. Just give it a couple edits. I'm gonna delete all this too. 
delete everything after this. But yeah, I'm about to do it right now. I'm about to show you guys right now. And if you haven't joined the Discord, cop a sample pack. We got a sample flip challenge going on. You got to pick a buddy, pick a buddy that's a part of the Discord. If they're not a part of the Discord, make them join the Discord because we like people here and we're very approachable. But I have a sample flip challenge that's going on right now. It's due next Tuesday. And y'all got to tune in. So I'm about to I'm about to load this thing up. I'm bounce this out and I'm going to... Load this thing up. So Florida Man is going to be the next B video. Just watch this. It's not a buddy sample flip, but it is a sample flip challenge where you need to pick a buddy. Basically, you pick a buddy and flip the sample with them. You need at least one, you need at least two to three people. Two to three people max. Two, you gotta have two for this next sample flip challenge that's coming up. It's gonna be due on Tuesday. Yeah, so pick a buddy, pick a person from the Discord. I have a channel in the Discord called Find a Buddy. Genuinely, I, I can't make this up. You got to pick a buddy. All right. Turning that on. And I'm going a, I'm to a see if I can set this up where y'all can see it as well. I do need to do a couple things. So I just bounced out that beat. Let me bounce out the other one, too, so y'all can see as well. I'm going to go back to the previous one and bounce that out, too. I'm back. I'm back. So I gotta bounce this out too. I'm kind of. I don't even remember what this sounded like. Hold on. this out let's just bounce this out export export boop yeah desktop pine saw AO will and AT All right, so I'm copying and pasting this, and I'm going to open up my Ableton Live session, my live set. Now, this is going to look a little bit overhaul, but I promise you this is going to make a lot of sense when you see it. I promise you this, guys, is going to look really chaotic. I, I know, I'm, and I know what someone's going to say. <laughs> I know what someone's going to say when they see this session, so I got to... I got to change the camera. I got to change the camera because it's, it's going to be a lot. And I know y'all are not ready to experience what you're about to see. So brace yourselves for how insane it's about to look. 
but it's all within reason. Okay, and I'm going to try and explain it and ask as many questions as you possibly can. Okay, that is the only way that I'll be able to explain to you guys what I'm about to show you. So without further ado, my live set template and I'm going to save this beat too. Here we go. Okay, so I have it loaded. Are y'all ready for this? Because I, I don't want to. I don't want y'all to be like, what the heck is going on, Kalen? What do you got going on? All right, here we go. So this is my Ableton Live set. I'm going to show you guys. It's not as crazy, but it can look confusing if you don't know what's going on, which I don't expect anybody to know what the heck is going on here. But I will explain in this video. <laughs> what you got going on? <laughs> Man, it's so funny because anytime I open this up, people are like, you play sessions with this? And I'm like, yeah, I'll play live sets with this. Yeah, I'll play a whole live set with this whole thing. There's there's a... And I might as well just go show you guys what I'm, what I'm going to do. Um... When you need me, let me see here. Spreadsheet, but pro I promise you it's going to make so much sense. It's going to make a lot of sense when I show you guys. So I need to find a couple of beats, 667. When you need me. Yeah. I'm going to airdrop that to my computer. Airdrop. But I promise you, it's gonna it's gonna make sense. So I have to break it down to you with you got without you guys seeing what it looked like. Okay, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna drag this to my. Yep, there we go. Motto. I need a. So I'll give you the consensus. What you're seeing right now is five years worth of music consistently being played and curated for my live shows. This is what it looks like whenever I do a show. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys the consensus in just a second. Let me, get, uh, let me get this one track. I flipped the model from Drake. Um, there's a floor remix. There's an overflip. Well, I only played like the first couple minutes of that song. When You Need Me. Yeah. Yeah, and then trifling motto. Flip. I got to airdrop that too. So yeah. Bro, this got to crash my Ableton if I open it. Now, here's the funniest thing. I've used this on a 2015 Mac Intel chip computer. And this session, low key has never crashed my computer, as surprising as that is. This has never crashed any of my computers. The only reason is, is because everything that you're about to hear is all in the house. And when I mean all that, all in the house, everything you're hearing, effect-wise, uh, rig-wise, there's no outside effects. This is all Ableton Live, and it only runs on like four racks. And I'll explain what that means in just a few seconds. So let me get that one. And I think I'll just leave it at that. Let me go to where this trifling one is. Trifling, trifling. Yeah, let me delete that. I don't need that one. Floor. Yeah, I don't need that one either. Yeah, I don't need that one. Okay, so. Deck one. Floor, and I got it right there. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys what's going down. And I'm going to try and see if I can have my drum kit on while I do this. Because it, it, it'll it make so much sense when I show my drums. Um, 
But let's just turn this on, on in, keep those all on, and yeah, there we go. Okay, so what you guys are looking at right now is my Ableton Live rig. And I have my controller that I can show you guys right over here. Raise this up a little bit and I'm gonna move my camera down so you guys can see what we're dealing with over here okay so this right here I'm actually gonna go I'm gonna come back to this this view the entire time okay this is gonna be a great this is gonna be a great explanation so as you guys can see and I'm actually going to save this as a preset so I can always show y'all what's going on. But right here on this setup, this is the MPD-226. And what you see here on the screen is the setup. Hold up. Let me, let me make sure I get my... my I, don't need, I need y'all to see my face. My face. Right, yeah, there we go. Yep, I'm gonna make sure that's number three, preset number three. So, what you guys have right here, uh, this setup here, make it a little bit. So, what you have here is a set of decks, okay? Think about a DJ setup, right? When you see a DJ setup, typically you have two wheels left side and a right side, right? A, B, deck one and deck two. Now, also whenever you're DJing or in most cases, like virtual DJ or Serato or Tractor, they'll have two extra decks. What you see here is deck one, deck two, deck three and deck four. So, I have a section of four decks. And I'll even show y'all without all the music. I have four decks that I am individually controlling just with the, the, the press of a button here. So this is deck one, deck two, deck three, deck four. And each deck is in a straight line on the controller. And I'm going to actually zoom out so y'all can see the full controller. But deck one, right here, deck two, you see it changing on the screen, deck three, and then deck four. They're literally mapped by the deck, okay? Now, what you have on each one is a playhead. These are all playheads. These are literally like you press play, and it triggers whatever is there in that section. This is also in clip view, so I, I can only imagine this is, this is a little bit confusing to people who don't use clip view in Ableton, but clip view is literally meant to play your arrangements live. So like loops and sections of songs is what clip view is meant to do. It's meant to play live. That's why they call Ableton live. Um, so back to the uh, controller here. You have a playhead that is mapped with each deck, and then you have a stop that is mapped with each deck. Now, that is how you stop each track. This is how you play each track, and I'll show you what I mean. Let's say I wanted to play something from one of my projects. I got this track here named Slanky uh, from the Funkle Prevail. I can re-trigger it as much as I want to and then stop it. See? Crazy, ain't it? And it's crazy because this whole setup is meant to literally skate over anything you have in a session. So that means I can press play here and then stop it. I can control a whole set. <laughs> so... 
I can control my whole set just with these sections of buttons because each deck does the same thing. Now, I didn't mention to you guys this third row. That's going to be for later. Trust me. So you got deck A, deck B, deck C, deck, deck D. Deck one, deck two, deck three, deck four. Now, after each deck, notice these little knobs and sliders. The way that Ableton scripting is created, the way that Ableton scripting is, uh, is created is that this controller has a script that every time you change it to a different deck, which is why I like the MPD-226, uh, each deck can have the parameters controlled on it. And so the parameters, I'm sure you wonder what are the parameters. The parameters are these knobs. So you see these first three knobs here on my session for just one of the decks. This is the first knob. This is the second knob on my controller. And this is the third knob. Now, I'm pretty sure you're wondering, I'm moving this fourth knob and that fourth knob here on Ableton isn't moving. I'm sure you're curious to know why it's not moving. If you look up right here, right here, you will see that that is controlling the tempo. And I'll tell you exactly why. The reason it's controlling the tempo is because you can be able to map the tempo and change the tempo at any point during your session. So I can press play right here. I'm gonna just turn the volume up and just speed it up. That little knob controls the entire tempo of the entire session, that one knob. But I manually mapped it. Everything else, came as a script. And scripts in Ableton are controlling parameters that you can use with any controller. Whatever MIDI controller you got, you can probably control the entire session with the scripts. They have beat. Like, yeah, it's dope. It's way better than a turntable, which is why I use it. I, that's why I don't, I don't use it any other way. So I show you guys like, you know, each of these sliders, they're all the volume knobs to each of the decks. So I can literally be like, let me turn it back down. Now I'm gonna show y'all something really crazy. So watch this, watch this. I'm pretty sure you want to know how I did that. So remember those knobs I show you guys? The knobs, knob one, knob two, knob three. Knob one, knob two, knob three. They are controlling the individual racks. Each rack has a live deck effect on it. So I can literally play this track. I have filter. So I can literally maneuver the whole session just off of these three knobs. So I showed you guys, well, I told you guys, this knob, well, these sections of, uh, and, and by the way, if I'm, if I'm going too fast, let me know. Do you have to switch banks for each deck? No, all you gotta do is just press the button and it'll switch to that deck because this button is controlled to map and press the decks. And I'll even show y'all what that looks like. I'll show y'all what that looks like. So there's only a couple things that I actually have mapped in this session. Let me go to MIDI, open this up. The only things I have mapped to this session are Deck one, deck two, deck three, deck four. Do you have uh, tips for uh, DJ sounds like backspins? 
this is why I want to I want to show y'all that crazy effect that I have. I have those three those four not those four like buttons I didn't show you. So there's only a couple things that I have that's actually controlling the session. <clears throat> you got the camera control on point. Let me start the stream by in a minute. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, so to show you guys what I mean, my uh, let me move this over over here. Ooh, and zoom back out again. Wow, there we go. So and I'm gonna update this one. So this this section is literally controlling each deck, and I have it mapped. You can map to select the controller, like. Those each decks, like, let's say you want to press a button to map it. Like, I'm going to just delete this, right? I can hit, I can hit map, like, click it, boop, and there you have it. Let's say if, I, let's say if my entire session were to delete itself, right? And I'm like, I don't remember the mappings. All I got to do is boop, 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 boop. And what this top layer is mapped to is the playhead at the very bottom so that is what is controlling me pressing play the entire time. Now, this is also something else that I want to explain. I'm pretty sure you want to know how in the world am I able to just kind of trigger the tracks to be kind of in sync with the beat. So watch this. I'm actually gonna try a different section of I'm gonna try a different track. Let's try uh let's try this one. Let's try this one right here. So I got end of an era drums. So watch this. I can re-trigger. I can trigger the loops all, all right here, right? I can trigger all the all the sounds and stuff right here. And what's dope about how I can do that? There is a setting in Ableton Live that allows you to be able to control everything on a global level. What global means is everything. So let's say if I were to go to my session and get all the tracks to be sitting on the same global, like, synced up beat, you go select all your clips and look for right here, this, this little button right here, it says launch box. This is going to be meant for the clips, okay? Your quantization is global, right? So I used to do all my sessions in fourths, but it's like a certain setup. I like my sessions to be double time. Um, and off chance you forget to label the BPM track, can you tap in tempo real quick to sync? So that's the only thing about this entire setup is that whenever I am trying to tweak, and Ableton also will let you know what the BPM is, I manually mark all of the tracks with the BPM. And to even organize it for you guys even better, I don't know if you guys notice this little setup I have. You actually haven't seen it, but look on the right side of my screen. See this, these colors, this entire set of colors? Just this, this section alone. These colors indicate where I'm at in the set at all times. Where my sets usually range are from 98 BPM to 198. Why? I, and, and it's not necessarily working hard. It's just working smart because I'm double time. I love double timing my times because it's like, uh, uh, would you be open to? Uh, yeah, I'll dab, I'll dab you down to, to, to do that. How do you look at what, what I hear your eyes? So I'll say I'll tell you this. Depending on the live venue I'm in, I can either be in a setting where I can change the theme. I can change the light. I can change it to dark. I can make that bad boy super super dark. 
Like, it allows you to change the function throughout your whole session. Uh, you can change the color intensity. You can build it up. Like, it really, it, you can customize how you see it. So whenever I'm, like, in an open day broad spectrum, I'll turn it on a little, like, maybe mid light or something. But if it's really, really bright, like, really dark outside, I'll go dark mode. I'll match it with the environment around me. So I don't want to mess my eyes up. That's just... That's just one of the things about how it doesn't hurt my eyes. But, and also too, I don't even look or do my sessions for more than like an hour and 30 minutes or maybe an hour. The longest set I've played recently was like an hour 30. Um, but it's cool that I have it set up like this because I could simply just be like, oh, well, I want to just, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna just load this up and then probably throw some drums on top of this. Like, watch, I'm going to just... y'all about i have a beat repeat on these buttons right here these are the time divisions and the beat repeat is just like how the decks are deck uh, one deck two deck three deck four now watch this so i didn't even mention to you guys one of my favorite things and this is where someone just asked me about DJ backspins. Check this out. Check this out. So those buttons that are highlighted blue, they operate as two different functions. This is my Ableton grid delay control. And it also controls the beat repeat that I'm playing. So let's say, for instance, I'm playing this beat, right? I'm playing these drums. And I want to be able to just, I can hold this. Now watch this. And it's all on beat. All of it is on beat. So I can literally go in between a whole set and just weave my way. the fun part. Someone said backspins, right? Yep. The delays are in the backspin. That is the magic behind how I do my sets. And I hope that made sense. So for the record, you could do this with any joint. You could put this with any beat. You could do this with any, any record. So let's say I'm playing a set. Like, like let's hypothetically say Let's hypothetically say that I'm playing, I don't know, let's say I want to play uh, dub, right? I'll tell you how I figured this out. Flying Lotus. Flying Lotus is the person that helped me figure this out, but Kazal Organism showed me his entire setup. He is the OG that showed me how to do this. The OG, like Kazal Organism, the GOAT, like he's the guy that showed me how to do a set on this controller or any controller. As long as you have your basis mapped out, you can literally make this dude, make this thing do whatever. So I could literally be like, all right, I'm gonna just... Let's say I want to like maneuver to like Blase, but I'm not going to play Blase because I know uh, YouTube's going to get me. So I'm going to just play all the beats that I like got. So let me speed this up. Thank you. 
And you can just kind of play around with it. You can have fun. So, my best bet for you, if you want to map this, honestly, if you get your own controller, like, let's say... What kind of controller do you currently have right now? What controllers do y'all have in the chat? If you own a MIDI controller that got pads on it, what do you have? Like, let, let me know what, what, what you have. Those two beats, by the way, that was Dub from Afterthoughts. And that other beat was called Oops from my EP uh, from 2021. Uh, you got an MPK Mini? Oh, that's even easier, bro. The MPK, okay, let me show you. The MPK Mini, you can do that with your keyboard. Like, all you need is four, four keys. All you need is four keys. If you got the push, just label what the buttons are doing. Like, let's, let's say, for instance, you need to map your keyboard to, to each function. Just make sure you label your keyboard. Like, they're all notes. My whole thing is notes. Yeah, it's the MIDI messaging. Yeah, that's, that's the, mm-hmm. Yeah, nano pad. You could do this with any MIDI controller. Like, this is completely universal. The only reason I use the MPD-226 is because it's so much more versatile. It's way more versatile. Because I could literally be in a, a situation where someone's like, yo, can you switch it to that one beat? I could be like, yeah, sure. So I could be like, um, let's, say, uh, let's say I got grits, right? So I got my joint grits. Um, and I'm actually going to play the chords for that, too. I could individually play the parts. Look. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. One, two, three, four. 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 Shout out to Edgar III. Shout out to Max for Live is a, a technology thing that Ableton bought out. Max actually is a technology thing that doesn't require coding to make plugins. That's what Max for Live is. I could literally be live and just... like on my side. I, I mean, I color coordinate so I can see them. you know, do sets and stuff. But um, yeah, that, I produced that. That's, that's, my, that's originally my joint first. Um, yeah, so uh, to tell you guys how I, how I do it, uh, before I, you know, finish off my tracks, I'll bounce out stems as well. Those chords are also in one of my sound packs. I think this is in volume... Uh, three. Uh, it's called Grits Lush Pad. Uh, but those Lush Pads are a synthesis. So, yeah, don't overcomplicate what is there. I'm just pressing play and stopping it, and I can control it by the beat. 